Greetings, everyone, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the Holy Spirit asked me to get on here and do a quick follow-up to the last video that I did uh, about the miracles that are on the verge of taking place real soon. The Holy Spirit laid it on my heart to tell me to share while you're on the subject of miracles, Tom, share your personal miracle. Tell the people, give your testimony, tell the people about your miracle and what's possible and how any single day on any given day, a miracle is possible in the life of any believer. And uh, so miracles are always possible at any given time. So I want to try to give this testimony as quick as I can. And this is uh, this will be an example of what we're talking about here and what's possible. So I'll go back four years ago to New Year's Day 2014. And on New Year's Day of 2014, in the middle of the day, a few hours before all the football games came on, uh, and about seven months after my wife had passed away and uh, I think that whole entire year of 2013 leading up to New Year's Day of 2014 I was under a tremendous amount of stress and in fact even after that probably into 2015 I was still under a lot of stress because uh, you know because uh, of losing her after so many years of being married to somebody and uh, unless it's happened to you, unless you go through it, it would be impossible for you to understand it. But if it has happened to you, then you know and understand exactly what I'm talking about. And um, when I received the uh, uh, information from the grief counselor, you know, that was at the funeral, that worked through the funeral home, uh, she sent me some uh, uh, paperwork in the mail, you know, describing, you know, the way things would be for about a two-year period of time, and I read that stuff, and, and that's exactly what happened. And so there was a grieving process, a, a heavy grieving process there for about two years. I think that put a lot of stress on me, and as a result of that, on New Year's Day of 2014, I had a massive heart attack. Uh, and what was really strange about it was that about four or five days before it occurred, uh, I was online and I happened to come across this video by this uh, medical doctor. And he was going over, uh, the video was about the symptoms of a heart attack, what to look for, what happens, and so on and so forth. And, and the video was about 15 minutes and I sat there and I watched that whole video. Uh, little did I know at the time, you know, that five days later, I was going to have a heart attack. And uh, uh, it was a lucky thing. I think it, that was the Lord's hand in that, too, because of the fact that five days before I had uh, watched the video, then that enabled me to know the symptoms right away. So immediately when I started experiencing the symptoms or something, I knew right away I was having a heart attack. And I, I sat down on the couch for a minute or two. And then I went to, uh, I was going to get up and go in the bedroom and lay down for just for a few minutes and then get up and call somebody and have them take me in. I, I, I just... I guess because, you know, I wasn't getting oxygen to my brain and so on and so forth. So I just wanted to lay down a, a little bit because if you stood up and you started walking around, you'd get dizzy and you felt like passing out. Well, I got as far as the doorway to the bedroom and uh, I passed out in the doorway and I fell face first down on my face onto the floor. And I got a cut above my eyebrow or something where I hit the floor when I fell. And my dad was living with me at the time. And he came from his bedroom uh, when he heard the sound of me falling. He came out come running down the hallway. And by the time he got into the kitchen here, right before you go into the bedroom, 
I was coming too. And, you know, I, and I started let, raising up, lifting myself up off of the floor a little bit. And then he started talking to me and he asked me what was happening. And I told him right away, I said, well, I'm having a heart attack right now. And then he started talking about all of the different, you know, who we should call, what we should do, and trying to think about how to handle the situation. And right away, I told him, I said, Dad, I said, forget about all of that stuff for right now. I said, what I need you to do right now is I need you to pray to the Lord that I'm going to survive this. And so right away, you know, he stopped talking and he, he prayed a prayer immediately, asking the Lord to spare me in the situation of what was going on and stuff. Once he got that done, then I asked him to call my son-in-law, which they lived about a mile and a half down the road, and give him a call and have him come and pick me up and take me over to the hospital. The hospital was maybe about two miles away. So he did. And about 10 minutes later, my son-in-law showed up. And that particular day, it had snowed about eight or nine inches earlier in the day. So there was snow all over. The roads were snow covered, slippery, and the normal drive that it would have taken us, if it would have taken us 15 minutes to get there, it probably took us maybe 25 minutes to get there because of the roads were so slick and everything, and he was sliding all over to get there. And then when we got there to the hospital, he drove right up to the emergency entrance and I got out and walked up to the counter and got out my uh, insurance card. And then I told the lady at the desk, gave her the card and told her about my insurance and stuff and told her that I was having a heart attack. And, and right away they had me come around and go into the back room and lay down on this like stretcher type of a thing. And she took the stethoscope and she started listening around and stuff like that for a few minutes. Only took a few minutes and, and another guy came in the room too and was checking things and stuff. And she said, well, yes, you, you're you correct. You know, you are having a heart attack. And so right away, they took me into emergency surgery. And I had to uh, take this, uh, swallow this big, pretty big sized pill or something, but I had to chew it up. And it was like some kind of tranquilizer to knock me out for the surgery. And um, uh, very bitter tasting. And then I chewed that up and swallowed it. And a minute or two later, I was out and I never knew anything else until I was down in ICU when I, I woke up like hours later. Um, and, uh, what it, what the, the, the thing about this thing is, is that I didn't realize at the time either, you know, there's different kinds of heart attacks and stuff, and heart attacks will hit different parts of your heart, and so there's different kinds. And the kind that I had was the worst kind because it was the, the biggest major artery of the heart, and the amount of blockage and everything, you know, something had gone up there like a clot or something like that and just clogged that thing up so that it just stopped it from getting any kind of blood through there circulating. And um, anyway, I was uh, told, I was there three days when I got, uh, they got, the day before they were going to release me, they had to do a EKG and they had to take some tests to make sure that I didn't have any heart damage or whatever. And they ran the tests and all the tests came back uh, positive that there was no, absolutely positively, no heart damage whatsoever. Everything was fine as far as my heart was concerned. I, you know, not, what they did was uh, they performed that surgery and they cut a opening there in my leg and then they ran this they run this thing up there to your uh, uh, through to your heart to the blockage or something, and and push that thing open with a balloon or something. I think they call it angioplasty. But then after they got the thing open, then they took a little tiny little 
thing called a stent and they put that thing in there uh, in there where the blockage occurred or something and it, and it keeps it open it's like a little it's like a little tube that's what it looks like a little tube and it it's wide wider than the artery it kind of opens it up and keeps it open and so that's what they did they put a stent in but the Lord wanted me to you know tell this te give this testimony and tell the story and and get people to understand that you know sometimes you know prayers can be answered in seconds when there is an emergency and a life-threatening situation your prayer can be answered in seconds and what I still wonder to this day, and I don't have an answer for, and I don't know if anybody else has ever been through this, and I don't know if anybody could comment, have any clue. Uh, the one thing that's, even to this day, that's a mystery to me, and I don't understand it, is why did the Holy Spirit, when I came to and my dad came up there in the kitchen, why did the Holy Spirit ask me, immediately to tell my dad to pray for me that I was going to survive the thing because I was prompted to do it and and I, I I immediately did it without hesitation but to this day I can't understand you know why did the Holy Spirit ask me to ask my father to pray that I would survive was it necessary was the prayer necessary in order to save me in the situation if the prayer hadn't been spoken, would I have uh, would I have survived it? Is it possible that I wouldn't have made it that day had somebody not prayed over me? Uh, I don't have the answer for it. But the Lord just wants me to make the point that any day is possible if you're saved and you're in Him. And you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and you're 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 you've accepted Him as Lord and Savior. Any day a, a, a miracle is possible in your life. You have to understand that and believe it, because this, that's what the Word says. At any time, anything that you could ask Him or something, He's capable of answering. He gave me uh, three scriptures or something to give, uh, you know, everyone out there today that's listening to this message. The Lord gave me three scriptures to remind people of in regards to my testimony here. In Hebrews 11:6, it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. And you must believe he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. If you, you must believe, you must have faith in order to please him. But you also... Uh, must believe that he's a, a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So his word says he is, if you diligently seek him and seek him with all of your heart and soul and mind, uh, he can uh, reward you. You know, he, he can reward you. So there's rewards. There's rewards for how close you get to the Lord. Uh, wherever you're at right now, the, the scripture is there in Hebrews 11, 6. It's saying if you diligently seek him, he's the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. If you want blessings, if you want miracles, if you want answers to prayers, then diligently seek him. Follow what it says there in Hebrews 11, 6 and begin to diligently seek him with all your heart. Start spending time with him. Open up the word. And start reading and studying and, and seeking him out. Ask him questions if you have a question about something. Ask him. If, if you have a problem about something that needs to be solved, bring it to him. Bring it before him to solve it. Put it on him. Put, put your burdens on him. And ask. You know, and, and, and explain to him. Father, I just, you know, this situation is just over my head. This is just something that I don't seem to be able to, to be able to solve. It seems like it's impossible. It's impossible in the natural for me to solve. But in Matthew 19, 26, you know, his word says with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. It's impossible with man, 
you know, so instead of wasting your time complaining maybe sometimes to people about all of your problems and what's going on and maybe seeking out their advice on how you can handle something, you know, first go to the Lord or something with the problem. Bring it to him and tell him about it and ask him to help you to solve the problem first. And then maybe he will put a person in your path and maybe the Holy Spirit will speak through that person and give you the knowledge and the advice and the things you need in order to solve that problem. But seek the Lord first because there's so many things that are impossible with men that are possible with the Lord. And so seek him out first. And then lastly, the last scripture that the Lord gave me was James uh, 4, 6, where he says, uh, James says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. So again, you know, he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And also his word says that if you'll draw close to him and seek him out and try to get real close to him and have a really tight personal relationship with him, then he's going to draw close to you and get involved in your life. And then he can help you solve the problems that you're having. There's no need for you to go through your life as a believer or something trying to solve all your problems on your own. Put it all on him. Bring it to him. And, you know, like in my situation where... Right away, you know, for some reason, the Holy Spirit was telling me, you know, tell your dad, ask your dad here to pray for you, that you're going to make it through this. First and foremost, before you guys figure anything out, before you call anybody to pick you up. And the last thing that I want to say in, the, uh, in the, the testimony story about this thing and about this miracle, the final thing I want to mention is when I was in the hospital, there were probably a total of about a half a dozen doctors and nurses that I talked to and they asked me, at some point they'd all ask me the same question, did you come here in an EMS? And I said, no. I said, they said, no. I said, I said, no. I said, I had my son-in-law. I called my son-in-law and I had him drive me over here. And they just looked like, you know, they had a look of shock on their face or some what. And I said, yeah. And they said, well, you know, it, it, you're you're lucky that you made it. Yeah, they're lucky. You're lucky that when by the time you got to the hospital with the kind of heart attack you had, you're lucky that you made it here to the hospital alive. It was a miracle you made it here to the hospital. And I was told that by a half a dozen doctors and nurses. And of course, I shared the story with them about asking my dad to pray for me. I didn't hold that back. I wasn't ashamed or shy or anything about telling them about praying, asking him to pray for me. And uh, uh, all of the people that I mentioned it to, uh, they happened to be believers. And then they were... You know, they were telling me actually some stories of their own. And we were sitting there telling each other and giving each other testimony. So uh, that just about concludes the, the, the message that I have for today. I have other uh, videos planned for the week. But the Holy Spirit prompted me to come on here and tell them about your miracle. And the fact that every single time that anyone here on YouTube is ever going to watch a video, Tom, uh, a ministry video that you're doing here on YouTube, they're looking at a miracle. They're looking at a miracle, Tom. Make sure that they understand that. When they see you and what you're doing right now, they're looking at a miracle because you could have died four years ago. You could have and should have otherwise died if the Lord hadn't answered that prayer and intervened, I wouldn't be here today. So I thank him, you know, for answering that prayer. I'm, I, I thank him for calling me and, and choosing me to serve him in this capacity. And I'm going to give it 100% uh, this year, I'm going to give this thing 100%, and I'm, I'm all into this thing, and anything that he's got that he wants me to do, I am uh, wholeheartedly want to serve him. And I would recommend that anybody else that's uh, out there, 
if you've accepted him as Lord and Savior, try to make 2018 be the, your best year of service and uh, studying and diligently seeking him out and everything that's ever been since that you accepted him as Lord and Savior. Because time is running out. The Lord is about ready to return. And he's returning for a bride that's going to be without spot or blemish. And so you need to get close to the Lord right now more than ever and focus on him and spend less time with the things in the world and spend more time with Jesus. So until next time, uh, God bless all of you. I love each and every one of you, but Jesus loves you more. Good night.